Hello everyone, I am Zhi Zhenzhong. Today I'm going to talk about our work, Arrow, Restoration of Air Traffic Engineering. Wide area networks are the workhouses of today's global internet services. All major online service providers like Comcast, AT&T, Google, own and operate their private WANs. All these global scale backbones are built using optical fibers across continents and oceans. Because building and maintaining a global scale network costs billions of dollars, it is important for WANs to be efficiently utilized. In this talk, I will present a novel system that improves the network throughput by a factor of two without compromising availability in large scale WANs. But this is not easy. It is very challenging to squeeze more throughput from a globally deployed network. In the following slides, I'm going to walk you through several important building blocks to achieve this goal. Let me start with the impact of fiber cuts on WANs. How are optical fibers related to WAN links? What is a WAN link? Let me give a simplified example. Assume that we have an IP link between Boston and San Francisco. The IP link can transmit data between router ports. If we zoom into one end of the IP link, we see that Right after the router ports, there is a device called optical transponder that converts the signal from electrical domain to optical wavelengths. After optical transponders, we use the optical switch to add, drop, or switch optical wavelengths in optical fiber networks. On the fibers, we place optical amplifiers every 80 kilometers to compensate power attenuation during signal propagation. Therefore, an IP link between Boston and San Francisco is actually a logical connection supported by provision wavelengths or lambdas running through a series of IP optical hardware like router ports, optical transponders, optical switches, and optical amplifiers. There is a complex relationship between the IP and optical layers. For example, in this four node network topology, IP link AB is supported by wavelengths running through A and B. Similarly, we can have IP links B, C, and C, D. We can also set up a direct IP link between A and D by configuring the wavelengths from A to D by passing B and C. With the IP optical mapping, the fiber topology on the optical layer is usually different from the topology on the IP layer. And the one operator's goal is to maximize network throughput while maintaining high availability. But Operating a global scale WAN while maintaining availability is very challenging, mostly because of unexpected failures, especially fiber cuts. For example, fibers are damaged when this pole falls down. Underground fibers may break when construction works hit the cable by digging into the ground. For some marine cable under the sea, they may also be attacked by animals like sharks. When fiber cut happens, it can no longer carry data, and the online services will be interrupted. This affects the availability and throughput of the network. How severe are fiber cuts? To quantitatively answer this question, we study the impact of fiber cuts on a global scale WAN. This figure shows the time on the x-axis and loss capacity on the y-axis. Each peak in this figure represents a fiber cut event. For a city pair, we observe that Fiber cut events happen almost every month. If we zoom into one event, approximately 8 terabit per second capacity is lost for 9 hours until the fiber is repaired. This is a massive loss for the IP layer capacity. If we consider more city pairs in the network, we find fiber cuts takes down several terabit per second capacity quite often. The question is, how do we solve this problem? Well, the state-of-the-art approach to cope with fiber cuts requires adding backup links. On this topology, to handle fiber cuts and avoid traffic loss, the state-of-the-art approach adds redundant wavelengths, backup lambda 1 and backup lambda 2 on the optical layer to create backup IP links 1 and backup IP link 2. In this case, when fiber BC is cut, the network is still available. However, this approach requires redundant network hardware like router ports and transponders. Now we know that fiber cuts have a huge impact on WANs, 
and the state-of-the-art approach is very inefficient as it requires actual router ports and transponders to build backup IP links. Our work goes beyond the state-of-the-art by unlocking the opportunity to restore failed IP links. Let me show you how we achieve this. We propose Arrow to reduce the redundancy while maintaining network availability. Arrow is the abbreviation for Agile Restorable Optical Wavelengths. Different from state-of-the-art approach, when fiber cut happens, Arrow achieves the same availability goal by reconfiguring wavelengths from the broken fiber to healthy fibers to restore the lost IP capacity using the same network hardware without redundant router ports or transponders. The next question is, how to plan IP optical restoration for Arrow? A straightforward solution is to separate the optical layer from the IP layer. By iterating over all plausible fiber cut scenarios on the optical layer, we calculate the restoration plan for each scenario that maximizes the total restore capacity in an offline manner. Then, we fit this per-scenario restoration plan into the traffic engineering formulation to optimize traffic flow allocation. An immediate question to answer is, is there enough room in the optical domain such that for every fiber cut scenarios, we can reconfigure all affected wavelengths? To quantitatively answer this question, we calculate the restoration ratio of each fiber in a large-scale WAN and plot the cumulative distribution function of restoration ratio for all fibers in this figure. It shows that 62% of the fibers are only partially restorable. How does this partial restoration affect our goal of reconfiguring the failed wavelengths from broken fiber to healthy fibers? For instance, in this case, if the middle fiber is cut, we want to reconfigure the wavelengths to the top and bottom fibers. If lost wavelengths can be fully restored, then the only decision is to reconfigure all wavelengths to revive the entire IP layer capacity. The decision is simple. And this is the beauty of layering in the internet architecture. But remember that in the last slide, we talked about a majority of the fibers are only partially restorable. It means we cannot restore all the lost wavelengths, and we have to be intelligent when deciding which IP link to restore, or equivalently, which wavelengths to reconfigure. Let us consider a partial restoration scenario where we can only restore three wavelengths on the top fiber and two wavelengths to the bottom fiber. In this case, there are many partial restoration candidates. All of them achieve the same amount of restore capacity on the optical layer. For WAN operators, when multiple restoration candidates restore the same amount of capacity, they care more about which candidate can actually satisfy more traffic demands or throughput on the IP layer. Therefore, we need to take a cross-layer view of the problem. We take two restoration candidates from the last slide that have the same amount of restore capacity. If we consider the real-time traffic demand on the IP layer, for example, in this case, IP link AD is carrying 100 gigabit per second demand, and IP link BC is carrying 400 gigabit per second demand. In healthy state, the network throughput is 500 gigabit per second. For candidate 1, because the restore capacity for link BC is only 200 gigabit per second, therefore, we can only satisfy 200 gigabit per second demand on this link. Meanwhile, link AD can satisfy 100 gigabit per second demand. The total throughput for candidate 1 is 300 gigabit per second. However, if we look at candidate 2, because the restore capacity for link BC is 400 gigabit per second, so the entire 400 gigabit per second demand can be satisfied, and link AD can satisfy 100 gigabit per second. Therefore, for candidate 2, the total throughput is 500 gigabit per second. Hence, considering the traffic demand on the IP layer, candidate 2 is optimal, and others are suboptimal. As a result, when restoring failed IP links, we need to take a cross-layer view of the network and consider real-time traffic demand on the IP layer and restoration candidates on the optical layer for optimal network throughput.
Therefore, to handle partial restoration, the question is, when full restoration is not possible, which partial restoration candidate leads to the best network throughput? In response, Arrow devises a novel lottery ticket abstraction to augment IP layer traffic engineering with optical layer restoration awareness. In the following slides, I'm going to present Arrow traffic engineering system that dynamically restore field IP links under fiber cut scenarios. To select the optical restoration candidate that has the maximum network throughput, the ideal solution is to formulate the problem into a cross-layer IP optical traffic engineering formulation. This formulation jointly considers the traffic demands and network topology on the IP layer. It also takes the optical layer topology and the fiber cut scenarios into account. Theoretically, the cross-layer formulation can find the optimal traffic splitting ratios on the IP layer and optimal restoration candidate on the optical layer. However, the problem with the cross-layer formulation is that it is an integer problem and contains billions of variables for today's van topology, making it computationally intractable. The root causes for the computational intractability of the cross-layer formulations are that the IP and optical layers are orthogonal, hence Formulating a cross-layer problem will result in a huge expansion in problem space. Another important factor is the mapping between IP links and their corresponding wavelengths is a binary decision variable. Therefore, it makes the problem to be integer and NP-hard. To solve this problem and avoid excessive computation complexity, Arrow proposes to abstract the optical layer and only fit essential information into the IP layer. We first solve the optical layer integer problem in offline miner and record the field IP link's restorable capacity as lottery tickets. After that, we feed these lottery tickets into IP layer traffic engineering and solve the T only on the IP layer to achieve a reasonable problem space. With the lottery ticket abstraction, we design arrow traffic engineering system. We first generate multiple restoration candidates using a modified randomized rounding algorithm for each failure scenarios and represent them as lottery tickets. Basically, the lottery tickets abstract the details of wavelength reconfiguration on the optical layer and only carries essential information on how each field IP link could potentially be restored. Then, we feed this abstracted information into the arrows TE formulation on the IP layer. Because of our lottery ticket abstraction, Arrow's restoration where TE formulation is a linear program, hence can return traffic splitting ratios for the IP layer and restoration plan for the optical layer with fast runtime for today's WAN topology. So far, we focus on designing a traffic engineering system that can restore wavelengths. An important question is, can optical hardware actually support fast wavelength reconfiguration? In the optical domain, for decades, the wavelength reconfiguration in large-scale WANs has been slow and complicated because of the need of amplifier adjustments. Our approach to solve this problem is to avoid amplifier adjustments by fully populating fibers with noise. The question is, how fast can we reconfigure wavelengths? We consider an optical network with two optical switches and two fiber links between them. Initially, Lambda 1 is running on the top fiber and Lambda 2 is running on the bottom fiber. When the fiber cut happens to the top fiber, we want to reconfigure Lambda 1 from the top fiber to the bottom fiber such that its IP layer capacity can be restored. However, this will result in a change in the number of active wavelengths on the bottom fiber and hence bottom fiber's amplifiers need to be adjusted. This amplifier adjustment process can take minutes. In Arrow, we leverage noise loading to bypass amplifier adjustments. Let us consider the same network. By adding the noise sources at both ends of the fiber, Arrow populates lambda 1 on the bottom fiber with noise at all times. When the top fiber fails, Arrow will replace the noise on lambda 1 of bottom fiber with the data originally carried by lambda 1 on the top fiber. In this way, 
On the bottom fiber, the number of active wavelengths does not change during the reconfiguration process, and therefore, no amplifier adjustments are needed. Hence, we save the amplifier adjustment delay. Finally, we evaluate the gains of restoration wire vans. We build a production-level optical network testbed to emulate part of the production van. It includes four optical switches, connected by over 2,000 km optical fibers. On these fiber links, we deploy 34 amplifiers. We also deploy 16 pairs of optical transponders to provision wavelengths on the testbed. We run a fiber cut restoration trial on the testbed. Initially, there are 16 wavelengths running on the optical layer, supporting the IP layer topology of four IP links. We simulate a fiber cut scenario where the fiber between C and D is cut. Therefore, 14 wavelengths that are running on this fiber are failed, and their corresponding IP links AC, BD, and CD are lost. We then use the key idea of arrow to reconfigure the wavelengths to healthy fibers. Our experimental results show that, compared with the state-of-the-art approach, when bypassing the amplifier adjustment process, arrow can reduce the reconfiguration delay from 70 minutes to 8 seconds. We run large-scale simulations on three van topologies with different network sizes. For B4 and IBM topologies, we use traffic matrices generated from small. For Facebook topology, we use real network traces from production measurement. We use a combination of fiber disk joint and k shortest path routing for tunnel selection. We compare arrow with state-of-the-art failure-aware TE algorithms, FFC and TUR. We also compare with ECMP as a baseline. The key metric in evaluating the performance of a WAN is the availability of the network. In this figure, a better TE algorithm should be able to sustain high availability at a larger demand scale. We consider several state-of-the-art TE approaches. For example, FFC can sustain 99.9 .9 availability when demand is scaled by 2.1. When the demand scale is larger, FFC's availability performance quickly drops under 99%. TUR and ECMP perform similarly. We observe that Arrow can support twice more demand with the same level of availability. The takeaway from this figure is, by reconfiguring wavelengths to restore failed IP links, we can restore twice more traffic while maintaining a highly available network. Note that the throughput gain is achieved without adding more redundancy on the IP layer. This massive gain of throughput in Arrow is the result of two important properties. First and foremost, Arrow is able to restore failed IP links and bring lost capacity back after failures. Secondly, Arrow's lottery ticket design enables traffic engineering system to navigate the vast possibility of optical restoration candidates and select the best restoration candidate based on real-time traffic demand. For instance, if we only had one lottery ticket, the gain would have only be 15%. Most of the throughput gains come from lottery ticket design. We also evaluate the network throughput versus the number of lottery tickets at a fixed demand scale. This figure shows that when the number of lottery tickets is small, the throughput fluctuates. This is because lottery tickets are generated based on randomized rounding. Hence, more lottery tickets are probabilistically better. As the number of lottery tickets increases, arrow throughput gradually increases with less fluctuations until it reaches a plateau. This means that lottery tickets has already covered a good set of restoration candidates. In conclusion, arrow is a traffic engineering system that reconfigures wavelengths during fiber cuts. While the restoration is done on the optical layer and TE is done on the IP layer, our lottery ticket abstraction makes cross-layer traffic engineering feasible at a large scale to meet the stringent TE runtime requirements. Our experiments show that Arrow supports 2 to 2.4 times more demand without compromising availability. Our code is available online, and we welcome more colleagues in the community to join us and explore the new exciting opportunities on the optical layer together. Thank you for your attention.